It's time for Mac Break Weekly, episode 205. Rich Siegel from Bare Bones Software joins us as we talk about brand new Macintoshes, brand new iMacs, new monitors, a new pointing device, and yes, finally, an Apple battery charger. It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 205 for July 27th, 2010. The new Macs are here. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by Go to My PC. Think remote access to your PC or Mac is complicated? Think again. It's easy with GoToMyPC. For your free 30-day trial, visit GoToMyPC.com slash MacBreak. And by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog for a free trial and 10% off your new account. Go to Squarespace.com slash MacBreak. And by Gazelle. The easy way to sell or recycle the used gadgets lying around your home or office. Don't just sell it, gazelle it. For a 5% bonus payment for your used gadgets, go to gazelle.com. Go to gazelle.com. Bonus code MACBREAK2. It's time for MacBreak Weekly, the show that covers your Macintosh needs. And I can say that now because we actually will talk about Macintoshes today for the first time in a long time. Joining us right now from uh, his uh, porch, the beautiful, on a beautiful Boston day, it's Andy Anako of the Celestial Waste of Bandwidth. It's a great day for a tumbler full of gin, Leo. What can I tell you? Oh, no, come on. That's water. We know. That is, it's water. It is a beautiful day, though. Look at that. Just It is lovely, just especially as the day you throw, it, you, throw away, you throw open all the doors. You put in your most colorful summertime frock yes. and just enjoy the Daily Rebels. Yes. I'm enjoying your frock. Thank you. Alex Lindsay is here. We don't know how long he's using a MiFi because the <laughs> fancy hotel Wi-Fi is just not that good. Not that I'm bitter. <laughs> so, yeah. So, it's a brand new hotel, and you'd think that they would have a brand new internet connection that was fast and, and all those other things, but... Uh, <laughs> I think, I think it's probably the case that hotels... Hotel uh, internet is, is, you know, they get not enough for all of the guests at once. And you're just having the bad luck. It's almost noon. Maybe there's uh, maybe there's a conference going on in the lobby. Well, it, is a, it is a computer graphics conference. So oh, well, no wonder. Is, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you, are you down there for SIGGRAPH? What are you down there for? Yeah. So I'm down here. We are covering uh, SIGGRAPH. We're going to be doing streaming uh, this week in media live uh, tomorrow on PixScore.tv. And, um, and we will, or PixScore.com. And, uh, and then I'll be doing my typical run around the show and show anything that looks cool. Uh, so we'll be recording all of those, and those will end up on the Mac break and inside the black box, which is we're going to relaunch uh, next week. So, uh, so, the, uh, so, that's, so I'll be running around with cameras and live streams. Uh, to, today is just... Uh, oh, this is going to be hard talking to you, Alex, I think. <laughs> uh, fortunately, wanna, we have wanna... some, somebody, somebody to fill in. No, no, just hang in there and... Uh... You know, we'll just live with the robotics, and we'll apologize in advance for the Alex Alex's uh, bandwidth. Rich Siegel is also here. He is, God, one of the original Macintosh developers, and he also has a bottle of gin from Barebones.com. Uh, he did. He does, of course, uh, BB Edit, the great text editor that everybody uses. Uh, text Wrangler. Um, you also have a a, a note pr Notepad program. Yeah, we have a, um, it's a, really a digital junk drawer called Yojimbo. Love Yojimbo. Thank you. Yeah. I, I was going to say Yojimbo, and then I thought, that can't be right. Is it Rashomon? Is it, uh, what is it? Is it <laughs> Yojimbo, that's it. <laughs> it's called Floating Weeds. It's a competing product. <laughs> um, great to have you on. In a way, it's uh, nice Thank to you. have you on today because... Uh, Having a developer on, I, 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 I like to get developers on the show to talk about, you know, the experience of writing on the Mac platform, but there hasn't been a lot of talk about the Mac platform of late uh, because Apple's focused so much, and we're, as a result, focused so much on mobile, whether it's iPad or iPhone. 
But today, they did us a favor, a little mitzvah. They released a new Macintosh right before we went on the air. So, uh, they refreshed the uh, iMac line to include the i3, i5, and i7. And even more, I think importantly for a lot of uh, high-end people like you, Alex, they finally let the other shoe drop, and they're going to have the 12-core, actually six, I think it's dual six-core yeah, uh, Mac Pros. That's huge. That's, that's quite I'm a piece of I'm, iron, isn't it? Yeah. We've been waiting. This is the, this is the, the, the highest-end Intel chip that's been out since, I think, January. It took Apple an uncharacteristically long time to release this, and the, and the uh, device itself won't be out till I think September. Well, Alex, are you excited about the uh, about the Mac, the new Mac Pro? I am. I'm very excited about it. We've been holding off on uh, getting a uh, any more Mac Pros, hoping that we were, this was going to come out. We thought we were going to wait forever. I'd I'd love to see a quad version of this. Uh, I, you know, six pro six cores uh, across uh, four processors would be even better. Of course, Apple gave us an inch, and I'm asking for a mile. But you know, it seems like they've already got that form factor figured out, unless the chips are significantly larger. So this is the Nehalem Extreme, uh, or is it a Xeon? It might even be a Xeon Extreme processor that's not currently in the store. The most they've got right now is the 8-core, which is dual quad cores. But this new Extreme Core from Intel has six cores on one chip. So they could, they're going to do a dual, which is a 12-core. But you're saying you would like 24. Twenty four processors. Twenty four cores. <laughs> you know that this is going to cost five grand for I'll six. Pay for it. You want twenty four? So, I'll so pay the for idea it. is just, that Apple will just sell us all one Macintosh and we can all use it, like everyone in the exactly. country. Exactly. Uh -huh. Just think of a whole bunch of screens all connected to one one machine. <laughs> that would be that would be just perfect. Be awesome. Awesome. Well, I was actually, Alex, cool I was, I was actually going to ask you about that. Like, uh, what, what, what is the yeah. top? What, what what we need to find is the top of performance. What what is the limit at which it would be ridiculous to make a machine more powerful than this to put more cores on the mother motherboard? Is there an yeah. upper limit? No, not for not for a pro user. I mean, the the the, the real limit for a pro user that's doing 3D, uh, that's doing compression, that's doing that is is the is really going to be the bandwidth that gets to those cores. So it doesn't. It, admittedly, it will not help to put more cores in there if there's not enough RAM, if there's not enough to, to support them, and also if there's not enough uh, bandwidth. And I'm, what I mean by bandwidth is you know the the data getting to the actual cores. Um, that starts to turn out to be the bottleneck once the cores get fast enough, where that you just can't, you literally can't max them out because you can't get the data to them fast enough. And so that, you know, that might be some of the, the calculations here. I, it, it, they're saying up to 50% uh, speed increase. Uh, typically, that's going to be with mathematically heavy uh, resource low uh, uh, problems um, because that's where the cores don't need that, that bandwidth um, to, uh, to perform. Rich, as a programmer, any any desire for 12, 12 cores? <laughs> oh hell yeah! Really? Uh, well, I'm I'm personally interested in these new machines not just because um, of of my software development, but also because I use this machine for uh, for gaming occasionally, maybe more occasionally, depending on who who you ask. Uh, and so. Anything that improves baseline performance is just welcome. I mean, the faster it goes, the faster I can do stuff. So um, 12 cores is 12 GCC compiles going at once in Xcode. And, and as long as the I.O. channel can, can keep those processors filled with data, uh, the thing's just going to run unbelievably fast. Um, for, with, with, um... for what it... Sorry, go ahead. I'm, I'm just wondering with um, uh, uh, the solid state drive offerings that they have, they say that you can get up to four, five, 12 gig solid state drives. <laughs> <laughs> that would, I guess, then handle the I.O. concern, your bottlenecking, yes? Yes and no. Um, certainly you, you eliminate most of the, the rotational latency because there's no rotation, obviously. Yeah, axis times zero, but, yeah. Uh, or nearly so. Yeah. But you can still only get uh, three or six gigabits a second off the uh, gigabits, gigabytes? I forget the order of magnitude. gigabytes, yeah. Yeah, through, through the SATA channel. So, you know, if you can pull that off two or three or four drives at once, if your I.O. channel can handle that kind of throughput, well, that's great, but I don't really think you're going to see that. What games are you playing, Rich? Um, lots of World of Warcraft. 
Oh, you don't need this for that. Oh, yes, yes. I do. <laughs> it's not a very heavy uh, duty game. Come on. <laughs> Um, and, and in fact, when I saw the, the new video specifications, the new, uh, the new AMD ATI cards that are available, uh, you know, that's even better. 512 meg of, of video RAM standard and, yeah. you know, upgradable to an even beefier card. That's, that's just great. And that's one of the things sort of in general where the Mac has always paid a bit of a price is there's been this perception that Apple has been consistently behind the curve when it comes to uh, gaming performance. And for the past couple of generations, it's been really nice to see them keeping up with, uh, with, with what's available, even, even if they're not exactly the quickest on the draw about it. You know, whenever they do an upgrade or an update, you can see that uh, that they're sitting on top of things on the hardware side, and and they're also keeping up with things on the the OpenGL software side. ATI 5770 is standard. The uh, top of the line 5870 is available with a gigabyte of uh, GD, GDDR5 memory. Uh, yeah, that's pr that's pretty high performance. Always been a problem on the Mac side because unlike the PC where you have many many choices of cards because it's a standard you know it's kind of standard. Uh, a lot of the card manufacturers don't make Macintosh versions. Uh, of their cars, so you always have been a little bit limited. Well, like, a big, a big issue is, is it, that typically happens is Apple wants to control the, the creation of the drivers, so you end up with a situation where Apple wants to control them. Then, but but typically, like Nvidia, especially for the pro level stuff, the quad, the quadros, the uh, uh, you know Nvidia wants to control that, you know, and so you get it into this back and forth of uh, who's going to be writing the the drivers for these, and I think that's been one of the things that really delays a lot of our. Uh, access to the cards is because Apple wants to do it because OpenGL is so part of the OS right. that Apple doesn't, you know, would have to show things that they don't want to show, and so as a result, they don't let the. the I think that a lot of people would want to make Mac ones, but they can't. Apple makes the drive. Right, right. I hate to be the worm in the Apple here, but with this new hardware, Apple is, you know, they put out a press release. Of course, they didn't have a press conference. In fact, they haven't even changed their front page except for a little thing down here on the new iMac. The big the front page splash is the iPhone 4 is here, and that hasn't changed. I mean, it's pretty clear that Apple, uh, even though they're making new Macs, still doesn't see the Mac as, I don't know. I don't think they, it's not that they don't see it as important. They don't see it as needing marketing. Is that it? Well, I, I think that they, they I, I really think this is more of what we had talked about, what we talked about in the past, that Apple is really back burner in the trucks. I mean, they, they released a brand new display, a brand new update to their hardware, and a completely new interface to the Mac, the the Magic Pad, right? Um, and and they did all of those things, and and didn't, you know, ran a press release, but that's it. You know, I still think that they're back burning that. They're like, here, kid, have a have a computer. They would have uh, in, in past days. I think they would have done a press conference just for the Magic Pad. Yeah. Let, let's talk a little bit about that. This was uh, uh, hotly rumored because of a patent uh, application that Apple had made for a Bluetooth touch pad. It's about the same height as the Bluetooth keyboard. In fact, it's obviously a clear complement to the Bluetooth keyboard. Um, it's a big trackpad, uh, bigger than the Mac Pro's, uh, or MacBook Pro's trackpad, uh, and it has all the multi-touch gestures. Andy, is this an important new product from Apple? I'd say so. Uh, and it's obviously designed to complement uh, their current wireless keyboard. It's the same depth, the same width. It will look like just an extension to what you've got right now. Uh, I think it's kind of significant. Uh, it's not significant that it's Bluetooth because you know, I think you'd have to put a gun to somebody's held head to make Apple put a cord on anything that doesn't right. absolutely require to have a cord. Right. Uh, but it's interesting because it's definitely an incursion of multi-touch into iOS. If they want to be more ambitious about support of multi-touch gestures in uh, Mac t OS 10.7, they're going to need to have a, a device like this in the field so they can say that, well, it's not just for uh, MacBooks, it's for everybody who has, uh, who has desktops as well. Right. Uh, it also, you know, you want to put fresh batteries inside your speculation engine. Uh, a device like this is exactly <laughs> what you need for a good afternoon of just sitting around the campfire and swapping tales about a, a new Apple TV that's built on iOS and uses uses this magic pad, magic uh, trackpad as your multi-touch input uh, device. Uh, 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 iPad applications that now could be uh, used remotely like oh, you want to use yeah. your... 
if you want to use the display adapter to turn it into sort of like a Roku box or a video projector, well, guess what? This is now going to be your projector. If you want to use the Mac as like a as like sort of a remote game console, uh, now you can have four of these Bluetooth devices attached to the same machine at the same time with kids holding it like this, like a controller and tapping and swiping. Uh, it really it it really does invite speculation. It really it it was no, it's not as though iOS an iOS based Apple TV would not have been possible without this, but it really got me this morning thinking that, you know, that would make a hell of a lot of sense. Rebuild the Apple TV as uh, at, at, with an A4 processor, uh, build it on iOS. It would not be materially different than what we've got right now, but then you'd have access to the entire app store because everybody who's developing apps for the iPhone and the iPad can now develop apps for the Apple TV. Uh, it's, it's interesting. Again, I, I, I really do underscore that this is just Tuesday morning. Again, you know, pour yourself a big tumbler of gin and then just uh, start <laughs> imagining what what you what you would if you were a CEO of Apple and you wanted it to happen. What this what this trackpad would mean. Uh, but it might be just a trackpad, but maybe not. You know, that's that's a really good point because when I when I first heard about this trackpad, I didn't give it a lot of credence to the rumors, only because I thought, is there really a big market for? Yeah, a giant trackpad. I mean, what is the market for that? Most people like to use mice. They use a trackpad on the laptop because they have to. I even know a lot also, of people who add mice to laptops. Yeah, and also you 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 look at how lean and mean Apple's whole product line is. That they don't put a product with a create a product with an Apple logo on it unless it can really support everything else that they're doing. Uh, and it makes sense in and of itself if again you speculate already that already you have a bunch of multi-touch gestures that if you look at it this way are available to MacBook users but are not available to desktop users. And this product might be just a way to say, we have one version of the OS. It works exactly the same for everybody. If you have a feature in one version of this Mac, you will have the feature in all uh, Macs in the product line. So it could be as simple as that. But it also, if you think about it as a way of, they can sort of make that multi those multi-touch gestures expand upon them. If they're going to simply say, the Mac is not a system where you're necessarily going to buy a mouse, you can also buy this multi-touch pad. And if you do, here are all the wonderful ways you can control your machine, maybe even from 10 feet away on your sofa. Rich, I'm going to guess from using BB Edit that you don't use a mouse at all. It's all keyboards for you. Um, actually, I, I drive with the mouse quite a bit. Um, you know, keyboarding, yes, obviously for code entry, there's no, there's no really good way to do it. Um, but for navigation, for, for manipulating the interface, it's, uh, you know, I have a, I think I can even hold it up since it has no wire. This very nice Logitech. That's what uh, I use. Wire, wireless mouse. Yep. Uh, it's the Anywhere MX, it says it's on the bottom. It's a great mouse. Yeah. And, and it's got the um, clutch scroll wheel, so you can press the button in and go, Woo! <laughs> yes, exactly. It's it's a great mouse, um, and I and so you know I mouse heavily in the UI. And as Andy said, the the thing that struck me about about the Magic Trackpad is that now you can have a consistent interface, a consistent input interface, right. depending on uh, ir irrespective of of whether you're using uh, a desktop or a laptop. Whereas before. It was very clearly divided. Laptops used a touchpad, and desktops used a mouse. And you know, some of you guys may remember many, 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 many years ago, there was a trackpad interface. A trackpad, I think Alps made one uh, that plugged into your ADB keyboard. Yeah, and uh, and there's also the bamboo pad made by Wacom that I use. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering if the bamboo stuff. might be a better choice than the than this. Um it, cer it certainly does a little bit more because the bamboo, depending on the model that you get, not uh, all model, all the all of the bamboo models are larger. Uh, but on top of everything else, you can also get a model that, for just a little bit more, will also have like a Wacom pressure pressure sensitive pen uh, associated with it too. And it doesn't right. look like this uh, trackpad, this Magic uh, trackpad, will get you pen input unless you get one of them. Mm. Uh, you, you get the the Link Sausage input <laughs> instead. I think yeah, you're, I think you're onto something with this uh, this idea that this is this is a piece of the lean back experience of a television product. It it makes a lot of things possible. It it's I I start off with the thought, gee, why are they getting into the random accessory? role but then you think that they don't do anything just to because some one person at the company wants to wants to do this unless that one person is steve jobs yeah. usually it's because it plugs into part of their future strategy so who knows but interesting but let's take a break i want to talk about more there's a there's new imax and i think the most important announcement of this new product line the new apple nickel metal hydride battery charger 
but uh, before we... I predicted it. I called it. You all thought I was nuts. It's going to revolutionize this industry. We laughed. Andy, Andy, we still think you're nuts. I saw the patent filings. I didn't believe it. And it's Alex... a revolutionary new powering system where instead of use, harnessing the energy from your wall, you're harnessing the energy of chemicals, of electricity. We call it wireless power. <laughs> Alex, are you still there? We've lost the video, but I think we still have you on audio. Yes, I'm still. I'm still here. You're just fading away. <laughs> you know, you you actually sounded better when you were in Africa. He's in Los Angeles, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. I, I did, and and you know, I'm going to be. I'm gonna, I, I, it looks like I'll be back in Africa in in uh, in uh, September, and I'm I'm almost certain that I will both look and sound better. You'll have better bandwidth in L.A. Yeah. Yeah. So, folks, just so you know, L.A. is now a third world nation. Yeah. Uh, before we continue on, though, let me mention our friends at Citrix and go to my PC. You know, if bandwidth is an issue, go to my PC is a very good choice because it maximizes your, f your screen refreshes. It maximizes the uh, speed with which you can operate with a remote computer with some very tricksy stuff. I mean, these guys have been doing remote access longer than anybody. They were the first to use uh, things like... Uh, Delta, screen deltas and things like that to really speed up your movement on screen. The screen refreshes. It's really quite amazing. Go to mypc.com slash MacBreak if you want to try it. Mac or Windows, it allows you to access a computer remotely anywhere you can get online. You just open up your web browser. You go to go to mypc.com, log in, and boom, there's your computer, your office computer when you're at home, your home computer if you're on the road. Whatever computer you decide to put go to my PC on is accessible. Securely, I might add, password protected, 128-bit SSL. No one else can use it, but you can. You can access your computer and work on any program, access any file, check email, even uh, uh, access network resources. They're all available to you just as if you were at your desk, but you're not. You're at home or you're on the road. You're enjoying life. Go to my PC. Couldn't be easier to install. In fact, if you go right now to go to mypc.com slash MacBreak, you'll have it installed before I'm done talking. It's that simple. And once you've got it installed, just go. Go on vacation. Enjoy yourself. You're going to love it. Go to mypc.com slash MacBreak. Give it a try free today. Leo Laporte here with Andy Anotko from uh, his beautiful porch on a beautiful summer day in Dedham. Or not Dedham. Down the road from Dedham. You're actually down the road from Rich Siegel, who's also with us. Along with Bruno the Parrot. And uh, Andy and Rich have been joined by phone by the virtual ghost-like voice of uh, Alex Lindsay. Hey, hey, Leo, can you try me on video one more time? Sure! I'm feeling adventurous. I'm open for anything. He's walking he towards the light as we speak. He's the only good-looking guy in the broadcast. Aha! Uh -huh. That's it. So, uh, new iMax, um, finally moving to the i3, i5, and even i7 if you want to do a build-to-order line uh, of uh, the Intel chips. This is a, a you know, yeah, it's a typical slipstream upgrade, the kind of upgrade we've seen with, from Apple before. No, nothing spectacularly new, just faster processors. I presume faster uh, video as well, although I haven't yes. uh, looked into it. That's the case, Rich? Yes, the video upgrade, uh, the video options have been substantially upgraded as well. Um, and again, you know, it's nice to see that happening because, you know, for for a while and, and perhaps arguably even now, the uh, the new IMAX of the, or the current generation, you know, the, the, the IMAX of the past year or so have really been first class desktop workstations. It used to be that the IMAX was sort of right, a, right. a, a cost reduced second run second tier performance machine it was basically it was, a laptop with a, in a inside a computer you know big screen in many ways right and it was definitely tuned and priced for uh, consumer use in the home but lately um beginning really with the aluminum imax and, and mm -hmm. continuing with the latest generation they really really come into their own in terms of performance and uh, and use and usefulness for for professional work you know obviously they're not internally expandable for disk storage so if you're doing a lot of content generation or if you're doing a lot of video uh, i suspect that you might find them coming up short but again as gaming machines as developer workstations and for 90 percent of the market um, they're really nice machines um, and ati radeon the 4670 
yep. uh, or the 5670 if you upgrade. Yep. And, and I we think do. that in itself might explain some of the slowness that we've seen when it comes to uh, Mac Pro upgrades. Because the iMac is all, all, all many, probably 80% of the market needs, maybe 90% of the market needs. Yeah, right. and, I think, I think, and I think Apple moves a lot more iMacs. I think they make a oh, lot yeah. more money per unit on, on an iMac sale. Um, and, and so the, uh, the Mac Pro, as, as lovely and desirable as it is computationally, really is a machine for 10 or 20% of the market, and that makes it a harder sell. Right. Uh, well, I, I think, think it's, I think it's probably, I, I'm going to guess that it's even less than 20% of the market. As someone who has a bunch of these uh, machines, uh, you know, I think that we're, you know, really looking at uh, a very, a fraction of the market. It, make, it scares me because, you know, I need these machines. But I was teaching a 3D class last week in Philadelphia, and uh, there was, um, you know, there was no reason. We were using IMAX. Why not? Great. Why and not? They were, and they weren't even the newest ones, and they, were, and they worked great. You know, yeah. and, and that's, the, that's the problem. Yeah, so I, I don't know what's going to happen with the Mac Pro. You know, one, one could argue that there's always a place for a high-end statement machine. You know, some car manufacturers do this. They have high-end statement cars that a very, very small portion of their, of their uh, audience will purchase. But from a business standpoint, it's hard to argue that you'd want to keep that sort of thing going forever unless you can really afford to do it. So, you know, I, I am, I'm unwilling to predict what might come next for the Mac Pro, but... Uh, I can tell uh, you what's I'm, coming next on my Mac Pro. StarCraft <laughs> 2, I'm excited. I'm surprised with, the, with your World of Warcraft that you're not a StarCraft player. Well, you know, I, I may, I may about to be, maybe about to become one. Uh, but, but I, <laughs> Stay I away from say, the South Koreans, that's all I can say. <laughs> These guys are insane. The, the other thing is, uh, this Mac Pro that I have here is a 2006 machine. It's four years old, and it's probably pretty fast still, right? Oh, it's 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 yeah. it's awesomely fast. It's yeah. a great machine, uh, and and you know it could be the last of the long service life machines. Perhaps that's that's how you look at a Mac Pro as a long service life well, machine. Well, I'm even sitting in front of. Um uh, an iMac that I got a couple of years ago. It was the extreme at the time, so it's three gigahertz uh, core two, and mm -hmm. I don't feel any real pressure to upgrade. Uh, you know, what is it that's putting a demand on the on the on the on desktops these days? I would guess it's the same in the Windows side. Is that people don't feel the urge to upgrade? Uh, it's a little different in Windows because nobody wants to install Windows, so they buy a new <laughs> computer when a new version of Windows comes out. But that's not the case on the Mac side. Yeah, I, I think it's, I think it's more tied to OS upgrades when you finally have uh, the 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 one version of the operating system that finally invalidates every G4 processor. That's when the G4 users will upgrade to whatever's current. Right, uh, right. And they're also probably not going to be going for. But then the that Mac already Pro. happened, really. I mean. Yeah, I mean, it, it, hap it tends to happen every three years, both explicitly when suddenly there's something on the side of the box that says requires G5 or better or requires right. uh, a core du uh, Intel, Intel uh, Core Duo or better. Uh, but uh, mostly it's a question of performance where you'll have one new library that just needs this, this graphics acceleration in order to really work. One new tweak to the user interface that it kind of works okay if you have older hardware, but if you have something built in the past two years, boy, will it ever sing. Uh, but uh, one one of the things I keep telling people when they're trying to make the decision between Mac and PC is that Macs tend to hold on to their utility far longer than a Windows machine. They, they tend to get orphaned far, far uh, less frequently. Uh, my my one current use desktop Mac is an iMac, and I believe it's the 2007 model. Uh, and it's not like I'm just doing word processing and getting email on it. I also do Final Cut Express on it. I do a lot of aperture work on it. And yes, I can definitely tell the difference between uh, doing edits and aperture on a faster machine and doing it on this iMac. But still, it's plenty fast enough for me, and I'm not looking to replace it any time in the near future. I think it's telling that neither of none of us know exactly what year our uh, Macs are. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to anymore. And that, but that really has keeps working. Yeah. That's, that's the biggest defect. We want to buy new shiny things, but right. we don't need to. Well, we're spending them all on phones and iPads these days, and maybe yeah. accessories like the uh, exactly. They're still getting pad. their money. Yeah, sixty-nine dollars for the Magic Pad, by the way. That seems a little pricey for what is essentially a, an input device. Uh, well, when you consider that a premium mouse will cost you about forty-nine bucks, uh, and a cheap tablet will cost a. Uh, uh, 
cheap tablet will cost you about 80 to 90. I guess you're right. It's, it's a, probably about right. 49, it's, it's, def, it's definitely not priced at giveaway prices. It's not, no. it's not priced at saturation prices, shall we right. say. Um, yeah. I'm really curious to see if they've stuck with the design. Uh, it, since, since it's a Bluetooth device, it seems to have the same design as on the Bluetooth keyboard where there's a nice, nicely sculpted design. It, flat there's that round the thing. Side. Yeah. Yeah. And which is nice. But the problem is that I find that when I travel, at least with my Bluetooth keyboard, it's very, very likely that that button's going to get bumped. Right. And then suddenly that keyboard's going to be looking for devices to connect to. And suddenly my iPhone is waking up and my iPad is waking up and the batteries and the keyboard are, are running down. And really that that's the time in which I wish that Johnny I was more in love with like old fashioned 1973 <laughs> toggle switches than switch. sleek, you know, like okay, give me a mechanical click switch that either is on or off. And yeah, that's it. Yeah. The, the kind I'm going to see if they've done anything different with this. Go ahead, Rich. I was going to say the kind of switch with a flip cover. Over right. Yeah, that's what we need, a flip cover. cover. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, all, I, I, all, I, I, all I'll say is go, that given that I, I always, whenever I travel with these keyboards, I take out the batteries. That can't a be a idea. positive yeah. comment on the design. Yeah, Alex, well, go ahead. If, if you know, as someone who was a pretty heavy user of the of the Wacom Bamboo, uh, which I just think is you know the greatest little input device, I'm I'm you know if I I think the only thing that would tempt me really away from that for regular use would be number one is I'd love to make sure that that if I could do multi touch you know all the same multi touch stuff there it would be great and also uh, touch sensitivity I mean I mean or pressure sensitivity if pressure sensitivity was in there you'd really and and I you know that's the case for both the iPad and the iPhone and the you know, and these input devices is a, just a little bit of touch sensitivity, not even at the same level of the high-end Wacom's but, or Wacom's or whatever you want to call them, but, you know, 256 or even 128 levels would make a huge difference in what in the kind of applications that could be created. Yeah. Uh, also, and I'm excited about this, uh, won't be available till September. The Mac Pro, not till uh, next month uh, in September, we'll be able to see 27-inch cinema displays. Uh, 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It's going to look a little bit weird. It's going to be a widescreen, uh, but a very good price, $999, just 200 bucks over the 24-inch display Apple's selling now. Still not competitive, I but, but... I have to say that as somebody who paid $2,500 for a 30-inch Apple Cinema display five years ago, I am outraged. Outraged, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good deal. I'm excited about that. Yeah, no, the new displays look great. Uh, and and the price is the, the price certainly seems to be competitive and and I am am happy to see that the the big billboard display isn't going away. The, the uh, thirty inch. Yeah, well, the the thirty inch itself, I'm sure, is going to get discontinued as soon as the twenty seven is available. But um, uh, but in in general terms, that twenty five sixty wide, um, and yeah, it's the new one is sixteen by nine, and the old one was sixteen by ten. Uh, I mean, in general, just having a display that wide is 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 great to have around. I I get tremendous amounts of work done on mine. We uh, years ago figured out that there was a uh, a very clear relationship between uh, build times and display size. The bigger the screen, the faster your builds are. Really? Is that true? Is that, well, it just that feels that way. Story. That was the story that everybody told me to get. <laughs> if I'm it, I, it's, it is true that all the research shows you're much more uh, productive with a larger screen. And I bet that's really true of people who are coding or doing graphics of any kind, anything where you, you, know, you have you know, multiple screens and windows open. I used to poo people because I was like, oh, I worked on Star Wars on a 17-inch screen. You can work on, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I have to admit that now our standard uh, purchase is a 30 and a 24. You know, and that was Eric's idea, actually, on your side. He was like, he wanted to get a 30 and a 24. I was like, oh, that's too much. That's one of each. One 30, one big one. And I, is that for, uh, what is that for? The timeline? Is that for? It, well, yeah, what you can do is you can put, uh, like, as we get new ones, that's what we've been buying. Is So you can put uh, interface stuff. You can put timelines. On the 24. On, on the 24, and then you have just one big screen. And we still, there's 24 as a minimum. Uh, right. We try to get as many 30-inch uh, screens out there as possible. Um, you know, and, uh, but we've been kind of, uh, you know, as we buy new computers, we just, the standard setup is the, is the Mac pro with three drives installed, you know, a fast card and two, you know, two monitors, because it just, it really does speed things up a lot. Right. You know, there's, you know, it's one of those little things that goes a long way. Yeah. Also, uh, a new battery charger, <laughs> which actually is pretty competitively priced. You get, f what is it? F uh, six. Nickel metal Six. hydride batteries. It's a two, yep. it's a two battery charger. So, 
Or is it four? I, uh, so two, it. I believe it's a two, two like battery two. At, a tar, at a time charger. Yep. Um, it, uh, it, what I was trying to find uh, in the tech specs is it doesn't tell you how many milliamps you get. Uh, so it's, you don't know exactly how powerful they are. I would guess it's, it's 27 or 2800, which would put it competitively with what most uh, nickel metal hydride rechargeable batteries go for. It is definitely char uh, cheaper than what you would pay for for a set of energizers. They're also making the green statement that and when you're when the batteries are charged up, it uses I think they're saying it uses 15 percent of the energy that uh, an average uh, battery charger uses after the batteries have been uh, have been topped up. So it uses a very, very it's not like it keeps like vampiring power off, right. uh, off of your power outlet after it's plugged in. It's a pretty in. good deal. And 30 bucks for five nickel metal hydride batteries and chargers is very yeah. competitive, I think. And, and, and Surprisingly. Uses, uses, the, uses the same power uh, the power cord adapter as uh, all your other accessories. So if you have international adapters that work with your other power bricks, it'll work with this too. Interesting, isn't it, though? I mean, they, they, the only products that they're mentioning in it are that, and when you want to recharge your wireless keyboard, you know, your right. batteries are close at hand. And I thought that one of the things that they were ta talking about the wireless keyboard earlier is that you won't even need to carry a battery charger because it uses power so sparingly. So it's, it's I a think curious item on the product. It's, their, it's their green thing, isn't it? I mean, they're just trying to be green. Well, they're not. Well, I mean, they're, yeah. they're, 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 see, that's... That's the reason why. That's the reason why the press release for the uh, for the screens and the new IMAX tell you about how recyclable the display technology is. That's not the reason why they would commit to doing a whole new product, right. is it? So, so what do you think, Rich? To be honest, I'm not really sure what to make. I'm I'm looking at the the uh, the battery charger info now, and in the store there aren't any tech specs. So, so yeah, as Andy says, there's there's nothing about their their capacity. I mean, obviously, you're not going to make a diehard ad with these things. <laughs> um, you know, there's there's six. It's interesting. There's six of them, so you can have um, a pair in your Magic Mouse or your trackpad. You can have a pair in your keyboard, and then a pair in the charger. Can, and you can have a pair on standby. Yeah. So I wonder if it's sort of one of these confluences of, you know, people are always complaining about, um, you know, the batteries dying on their peripherals. And um, um, there's, an, there's a market opportunity to hop in here and say, okay, well, not only do we have a solution, but we, we now have a solution that involves uh, recharging and reusing instead uh, we have a message that involves uh, reduction and reuse instead of discarding old batteries which I, I think is is by no means bad um, this sounds like a Steve kind of, a Steve thing it, yeah if we're gonna make and, a lot of things that require batteries we better really strongly push people towards recharge I was mm. I was going to say it's it's part of an end to end thing now you know all of our peripherals take batteries now right right got the trackpad got the mouse got the keyboard they all take batteries and uh, so now the message is okay here's one here's one last step in the chain well, and I don't think I don't think this is going to be even a last step I think that the issue is is that they you know Apple has uh, a constituency that will buy spend a little bit more for it to be designed a little bit better for it to work a little bit better and there's no reason why they can't keep on just adding more of these little add-ons and you know everything from the bumpers to the ears to everything else there's no reason why they can't keep on building that vertical market out to anything that touches the computer or their iPhone that they're building something that is just a little bit more expensive but it's also just a little bit more refined I don't see. I don't, I don't know. Like, but at least when they were building the bumper case, the reason why that they built that was because they're the only people who have access to the new shape and the new size of the new iPhone. So that was definitely not only an opportunity for them, but also they could tell themselves that well, also we're going to be giving people we're, we're going to be the only source for at least a month and a half. Let's make sure that this product is out there because our customers want cases with batteries. They can get batteries just about anywhere. I mean, if you extend this logic to silly lengths, it also opens the door to well, we're also going to be selling vegetarian burritos because our CEO was a vegetarian and we think that it'd be good for everybody <laughs> if they stop you know if they stop eating the pork burritos that you get at chipotle you know, you know? i could see them doing that i'm sorry in fact or, or, at, steve's <laughs> wife for a while was going to do a vegetarian food line i believe so just don't put the apple logo on it yeah that's maybe awful. maybe that's another i don't know yeah, are, but, we, are we looking at like an iphone is, 5 if, with if like so that runs on six double a's i don't know if they started making coffee at the apple store do we think people would buy it yes i think yes Yes. yes. Apple branded coffee beans. Apple beans. <laughs> yeah, know, they know. They, but you know, uh, what's interesting is that well, I guess there's a little Apple premium on this. You can buy. You probably could get five, uh, six nickel metal hydrides 
and a charger for less than 30 bucks, but not much less. There's not a huge premium on this. Well, right okay, so I'm, I'm actually looking at the Amazon product page for uh, a product that I have used and, and enjoyed for quite a long time, and it's a LaCrosse technology battery charger. I use and that it, too. I love it. It, it comes with the, the bundle that I'm looking at is it's forty two fifty. Yeah, three bucks more. And uh, thirteen, I think. Oh, actually, okay. okay. That's right. Uh, and it comes with it comes with some of their own branded nickel metal hydrides, but uh, these rechargeable batteries uh, are widely available in many brands. Um, and it's a smart charger. I can't speak to its its power draw. I'm sure that it, it is one of the offending chargers that draws too much power, but. Uh, it's very practical. Ours gets them an enormous workout because there's a Nintendo Wii in the house and there's an <laughs> Xbox, and so there's lots of game controllers that need that need double A's all the time. But you, you, yours, I think mine does. It has a, a, a gauges on it that say you can recharge the bat, refresh the batteries. You could says how much the charge is, how long it's. I mean, it's got a lot of information on it. It's LCDs for each, and it's six six batteries, as I remember. Yeah. Um, yeah, it holds four ba The four. charger charges four batteries. Four, okay. It's a, it's a very geeky, very tweaky, techy thing in a way that I think Apple respects a lot of their customers don't want to have to fuss with. And right. certainly I don't fuss with it. I just I just put the batteries in and charge them. Um, anyway, but I don't I, know. I don't know how we got 15 minutes out of a battery charger. But <laughs> <laughs> and because that, it's the, it's that a is the mastery of it all that Apple can get us can, can get us to spend 15 minutes. <laughs> It's a, it's a stupid battery charger. <laughs> well, you know, I think I think we, we skipped over one thing. I mean, it's Apple AA batteries. We should just be happy they fit in any AA battery holder. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. You don't have to buy a special Nintendo Wii in order to use these things. I'm a little disappointed, to be honest, that it, they don't come with an, an iPod connector on them. See that that would uh, be interesting if they if they sold like a like a, a, an officially supported like four double A battery iPod iPod power or iPhone uh, power adapter. Yeah. I mean, That'd if you're really committed to that, why not? With a, with, a, with, a, with a hand crank and a little windmill. Speaking and of the tread, <laughs> treadmill for the hamster. Speaking of the bumper cases, uh, I ordered mine uh, immediately, and uh, I'm very happy to say that my uh, iPhone will be able to get normal antenna reception September second. <laughs> So it's a little bit of a delay, although I'm starting to see on the net people are saying who got the same email from Apple uh, that they, they, Apple said that there's our shipping. So I guess it really is a, it's a question of how many they can crank out and yeah. at least it's I free. I wonder how many people reacted exactly the same way that I did, where we didn't. I didn't go from by style. I didn't go by need. I immediately went on Amazon and found out which one of these 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 cases is the most expensive one they're offering. <laughs> That's the one that I want. I want the two piece carbon fiber. I think it's a spec case <laughs> that goes for like thirty four dollars. That's the one I want. You did it by price, Andy. Of course I did. <laughs> well, I, I, I already have a I already have a black bumper case, you know, and so for for one of them. So I had another. So so I had another. Company Again, it's like, why would I want to get anything less than the most expensive? I'm an American, for God's sake. All right. I'm, what do we think about this crazy ass rumor that the reason, and it keeps coming up, the white <laughs> that the white yes. iPhone is delayed, is because not because of the paint color, not because of any production difficulties. By the way, those don't seem very credible reasons. I mean, you would think they'd have figured out how to make these things before, you know, announcing them. But but for whatever reason, people are saying, no, no, the white iPhone's going to have a new antenna design. You believe that, Rich? Profanity, how much profanity am I allowed to use in expressing just how stupid I think that idea is? You could say it's is. bull pucky. Get the edit card out. <laughs> bull pucky. That's got to be the most ridiculous thing yeah, I've heard. It, it doesn't seem I possible. I don't know how long. Yeah, all right. You know, I can see, I can see Apple... Uh, doing an ECO, doing an engineering change to address something in the manufacturing process for the antenna. But um, the notion that they're just holding up the white iPhones for that, no. I, it was already previously uh, disclosed. I, I forget the source for that now, uh, but it's around there out, out on the Internet somewhere. Um, like it's believable. Uh, that um, they were having yield issues with uh, the white finish. I think on, it was a tech crunch that was saying that. I, I can't remember. But yeah. uh, that's possible. Uh, and and you know that to me is. And, ga is, and gadget said that. And gadget yeah. to give him credit. 
one haven't of those. They, haven't they had issues in the past with white? I mean, haven't there been like yellowing yeah. and, and stuff like that? There has been yellowing. Color. You're right. That's a very good point, Alex. Yeah, the white, the white MacBooks, the plastic on the yeah. white Yeah, yeah, they yeah. they were horrible. Yeah. So I, 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 that's why I found that explanation very very credible. I mean, if they could get if they could get them all the exact same color, that wouldn't be a problem. But I think the problem was that they were looking at here are fifty iPod, fifty white iPhones, and there are four different shades of white inside the sample. We want to make sure that if any two people hold their iPhones next to each other, white will be white will be white. Yeah, that makes and sense. I think that, and I think that they, I think it still was related to the antenna in the fact that. Apple is extreme, like before they might have put it out, and I think that at this point they are extremely sensitive to any kind of pushback. So if there's, if there's two variations, and if there's one variation that shows up every 50 phones, I think that, that Apple would be tempted to uh, not release it because they want to make sure that they don't have to deal with another antenna gate. Right. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about change gears a little bit, talk about a very big change in copyright law in the U.S. You can now reverse engineer your dongles. But before we get to that, let us mention our friends at Gazelle. If you are looking, if you're hankering for a new iPhone, and I'm sure many of you are, you're probably saying, but, but golly, what am I going to do with the old iPhone? Or worse, how am I going to get the money out of the old iPhone to pay for this? Well, here's the beauty part. Gazelle, my friends, will buy your iPhone from you. I want you to go to gazelle.com, G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com. Gazelle is a really neat service that buys your gadgets, gives you a fair price for it. They'll send you a box. You pop the gadgets, and you can do multiple gadgets in one box, by the way. That's kind of handy. You pop your stuff in the box, send it back to Gazelle. Their product experts evaluate it erase any data that's on it, and then send you a check. Gadgets in 20 different categories, Xboxes, PlayStations, Wiis, GPS, video games, laptops, cameras, ebook readers, MP3 players, and of course smartphones. And you get cash, or if they're not worth anything, they will recycle them responsibly for you. So look, if you've been sitting on a lot of electronics and thinking, I, what am I going to do with this? Don't have a garage sale. You could do it on eBay, I guess, but why not let Gazelle sell it for you? And if you want a 5% bonus payment for your used gadgets, go to gazelle.com and use the bonus code MACBREAK2. That's MACBREAK and the number 2. And Gazelle will send you 5% additional over and above. Over and above the price that promise you online. So it's very simple. You just go to gazelle.com. You enter in whatever it is the device you're going to sell is. Let's say I've got a, uh, oh, I don't know, Apple iPhone... Uh, 3GS, 16 gigabytes. Make a call successfully? Yes. Free of water damage? Yes. By the way, I love this here, the graph below it, showing the the price as it's gone up and down. It's been going down quite a bit ever since the iPhone 4 came out. And then they project what the price will be next month, the month after, the month after that. So you get an idea of what the, the price uh, uh, delta is. Let's say it's in good condition. I have the AC adapter and original cables, and it'll tell you how much... It's worth $122. They'll send you the box. You pop it in there. If it matches what you said, they'll send you the check. If you want more information, the live chat's available on their webpage right now, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Just go to gazelle.com. And don't forget, when you add it to the box to use MacBreak 2 as a special coupon code, and you get 5% more off. It is such a great deal. Responsible recycling, too. And if you're a nonprofit, a great way to raise money, Gazelle will set up a, a product page, a, a cake sale page for you. And you send, you know, you, we're, we're, gonna, we're trying to raise money for uh, uniforms for the soccer team. You set up the Gazelle page. They, uh, and then just tell everybody, send your gadget to Gazelle and we get the money. It's a great way to raise money. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E dot -E com. Don't just sell it. Gazelle it. Use the MacBreak 2 coupon code for a special deal. Librarian of Congress has freed our phones. Hallelujah. Free at last. <laughs> free at last. Uh, periodically, Librarian of Congress does this. Uh, he is the keeper of the copyright. Of course, the DMCA, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, determines really what is copyright, what is fair use, and all of that. But every once in a while, the Librarian of Congress will issue a ruling that explains, enhances, elaborates it. And apparently it has the force of law. Yeah. It's not just some uh, guy saying, hey, I think it's this. 
<laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, that uh, part of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, it requires them to every three years hear petitions for modifications to it. So if, uh, the the idea being that when, when this was ratified, something like 10, 15 years ago, was it? Yeah, uh, the idea was that as technology changes to make sure that something that was a good idea back in the Clinton administration is still a good idea or is now no longer a good idea. Right. So it was, it was we, we really have the Electronic Frontier Foundation to thank because they're the ones who prepared all these all these briefs for this periodic uh, uh, reexamination. Yeah, that's I'm glad you said that, Andy. I really want to give EFF credit. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a monthly donor to the EFF because I just think they do such good work, and this is a very good example. They filed the briefs, and it wasn't, by the way, just for uh, uh, phone users. Two years ago, the librarian said that it is legal to unlock a phone, a used phone. It's legal to do so. You own it. Um, they clarified that this time around. They said, yes, you know, it really is. And they also said it's legal to jailbreak a phone, that is to modify the phone so it could run software not authorized by the, the company, as long as it's legal software in its own right. They yeah. also said things like um, librarians and professors and teachers can unlock CDs or DVDs uh, for use uh, using clips in, in a fair use context in education. Which yeah, they're, they're, now they're, it's, they specifically said that fair use does apply to things like uh, commentary, sa even satire, uh, education. Uh, you can, you still, it doesn't, uh, it still doesn't affect specifically ripping a DVD for use in your own library. That wasn't affected by this particular, uh, this particular de de finding. But now explicitly. You can't stop someone from doing a, uh, from, from including, from doing like a review of the, the, the Phantom Menace that includes clips from the Phantom Menace DVD right. uh, and putting it on YouTube. That's kind of huge. I mean, uh, it's always, it is. One of the things it, about it, the DMCA is there was no fair use provision in it. Well, there, the, it, it said that it was okay to do some things, but not other things. I think the, the big problem that was, that have, that's been created that the EFF was trying to fight here was that corporations were abusing the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Uh, Apple was saying that, well, no, that, that you can't jailbreak your phone because you can't you can't distribute this application for jailbreaking iPhones because that violates our copyright and under the provisions of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, that is absolutely illegal and will turn the federal government on you because you're violating the law. And the Librarian of Congress has said no because this 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 guy is not giving away free copies of your iPhone operating system they're just releasing a utility that will exploit and a security hole that you yourself left inside the product to make it do things that the customer who owns this phone wants to make it do that is definitely not something the librarian of congress cares about go peddle your papers right so uh it also gave professors the right to uh, uh, do research on copy protection and not be liable for that and it means uh, you can also reverse engineer a dongle that is horrible dongles. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's a, a specific, one of the specific uh, call-outs for this one was that if you have a piece of software that's like five years old and it requires a dongle in order to make it work, and sometimes these are thousands of dollars for the software, just one single installation, and if this company goes out of business, it is not a violation of the DMCA to use an exploit to remove the copy protection from that piece of software because otherwise your, your software would be unusable. Again, consistently, this is... Go ahead. Is it only that? Is it? Can you reverse engineer the dongle at any point in time? Or no, only no, no. Not, not, not universally. If they, it's still copy protection to prevent you from copying the software. The specific exemption that they applied this time is that if the company, if there's no other way to run this software because the company has stopped supporting your computer or stopped supporting that product, then as someone who legally purchased a copy of the software, they're like, you're, you still have the right to use it. And if the only way to use it is to remove this copy protection, then that's what you got to do. Yeah. yeah. For orphan dongles, Alex. Orphan dongles only. Right. Right. Poor little orphans. The little orphans are now allowed to be reverse engineered. <laughs> Lisa, can I have an install? Apple's response, their canned response, the only one they could give is, well, it still violates our warranties. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's all they could really. I mean, I, I wrote a column this morning about it that says that's great because it's good that the court has said that the fact that you per paid a lot of money for this device means that you have a right to do certain things to it that the company that sold it to you doesn't necessarily might not like. Right. Uh, but it also that still means that jailbreaking a phone will still give you access to a very tiny library of very poor software, of which maybe four of these utilities are worth their time, mostly Nintendo emulators. Right. Uh, that carrier unlocking a phone is still really, really dangerous. I mean, Apple is not legally obligated to make it easy or even fix any phone that you break because you, you, uh, you carrier unlocked it.
Uh, I got one question uh, on the radio this morning from, does that mean that I can take my iPhone into a T-Mobile store and they'll like unlock it? They'll, uh, they'll, they'll un unlock it and sell me a contract? No, it doesn't because no. that still violates a lot of things. But again, if you want to do that yourself, by all means. Device, uh, according to Apple, here are the consequences. This is a little bit like <laughs> the drug uh, ads you see on TV. Side effects may include device and application instability, unreliable voice and data, disruption of services, compromised security, shortened battery life, inability to apply future software updates, <laughs> sausage fingers, if <laughs> caution, if <laughs> jailbreaking lasts also, for more than four hours. Symptoms. Four hours, <laughs> consult the <a> doctor. <laughs> consult the doctor. Flu like symptoms. Yeah, no, it, it, Apple's pretty clear that they don't want you to do it, but they just don't have any legal way to stop you anymore. Apple strongly is, it cautions against installing any software that hacks the iOS. Yeah, and mostly, and mostly this was targeted not at the users, but at the people who are distributing the software. It basically takes a, a, a really big club just out of their bag and breaks it in half across the, the government's name. So it's, name. it's legal to not only jailbreak, but to write software that jailbreaks? You can't, the, 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 right, exactly. Yeah. The Ponage utility, now there's really no way for Apple to prevent that from being distributed because it is a legal piece of software. Before they could say, we insist that you take this down because this is essentially a burglar tool. Right. That's not legal to distribute burglar tools. Now the copyright office has said that, no, it's not a burglar tool by all means. Distribute it all you want. What I want to know, though, is that if it, if it's now legal to sell that as a service, meaning if someone wants to, uh, uh, you know, have a, have a lemonade stand at the county fair saying bring on, bring in your phone, we'll unlock it for you. Uh, if that's if that's uh, okay, uh, because if so, I'm sure that there, you could do a booming business saying that send us your old iPhone, we will do everything we need to do to make it workable on the T-Mobile network. Not only will we unlock it, but we'll also make sure it's configured to use the 3G network. We'll make sure it's configured to use voicemail. Because once you once you've got the the, the uh, T-Mobile SIM in there, you're about 85% there. Uh, the rest of them are features that will not work uh, unless you do a lot of really specific configuration. Which is why I usually say, you know, why if if you could if you could jailbreak your if you could unlock your phone and use the Verizon network on it, that would be a really serious win. Unlocking your phone and using it on the T-Mobile network. That's just, I mean, there are they're, they're cheap, they're cheaper ways to flip the bird at Apple than ones that will not redu result in a reduce, reduction of your 3G coverage. Well, for me, for me, the only thing I'm tempted to, to jailbreak a phone is just so I can get the video out. Right. You know, that, like, you know, it's I like, think it's mostly the case when people jailbreak a phone, it's one or two particular applications on Cydia right. or somewhere that they want to run. Yeah. Or they want to stick it to the man. EFF says it's about <laughs> one million people. They believe about one million people have jailbroken their iPhones. That's less than one percent. It's a, it's a small number. Although Apple, I'm sure, is breathing a sigh of relief. They don't have to prosecute Steve Wozniak for <laughs> on television breaking Kathy Griffiths Griffin's uh, iPhone in the car. Oh, that's not the first time her. Okay, you're, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, something's been broken you're in the dropping, car. You're dropping, you're dropping, <laughs> Just the first time a founder of Apple did it, or <laughs> let's not even guess. Let's, we shouldn't even guess. We just don't know. Uh, Apple faces a lawsuit over overheating iPads. I don't usually do lawsuit news because nine times out of ten, these lawsuits are, you know, going after deep pockets for stupid reasons. This one is so egregiously stupid, I can't help but bring it up. The complaint filed... Uh, three days ago in federal court in Oakland seeks unspecified damages and class action or group status, claiming, quote, the iPad does not live up to the reasonable customer's <laughs> expectations created by Apple because it overheats so quickly under common weather conditions. <laughs> if you okay. leave it in the sun, it turns itself off. <laughs> exactly. Okay, and doesn't so it doesn't get hot enough solar to fry power. anything. What's Jeez. the deal? I mean, this is one of the few devices in the world that doesn't actually get hot when you're yeah. using it. Uh, you have to leave it in the sun to get it hot enough. <laughs> and then it's just, just protecting itself. Anyway, I, I just love these. Uh, but I, usually we don't, I don't want to report on them. It's like I don't want to give these guys any ammunition. But that one's just so egregiously silly. Um, what did we do? Oh, I want to talk a little bit about I'm going to make enemies again here. Apple's decision to put out videos on YouTube showing dropped bars on other companies' cell phones. We'll do that in just a little bit, but before we do, because I, I got some feelings about this one, but before we do, 
Sounds like Andy does, too. I want to mention Squarespace.com. Squarespace is a great place to go to make your next website. It makes it easy, but yet looks professional. You know, often those two don't go hand in hand. You go to the easy to design website building site, and it's, you know, it looks like everybody else's website, kind of junky. Not Squarespace. My goodness. If you just go to Squarespace.com right now and click the link at the top, it says examples and take a look at what people have been doing with Squarespace. You'll see that every site, every Squarespace site is unique, is beautiful, is powerful. Squarespace is truly fantastic. Used by some of the best uh, companies and people in the world to do beautiful sites. And it's easy. You don't need to be a designer to use Squarespace. Anybody can do it. Just go to squarespace.com slash MacBreak right now and, and try it free for two weeks. No credit card necessary. You can even import the data from your existing blog on WordPress or Blogger or TypePad or Movable Type. Just import it right in. Import it right out, too, if you want. Beautiful photo galleries. Incredible social integration with all the major sites automatically. Easy to put you know, widgets on your page that show your Twitter, your Facebook, your LinkedIn, your Flickr. You get great stats. Their VPS technology, their Java virtual server technology, means you never run out of bandwidth. Form building, data collection, intuitive editing, great iPhone app, best app ever for blogging, and uh, amazing sites that look fantastic. Just visit Squarespace right now. Do me a favor. Try it free for 15 days. Squarespace.com slash MacBreak. And if you decide that you want to buy, wouldn't be a bad idea. Go to squarespace.com, sign up today. They have pricing, very affordable pricing, starting at $8 a month. That includes hosting and all the software. You get 10% off for the life of your site when you use the offer code MACBREAK. Squarespace, exceptional sites begin right here at squarespace.com. So Apple uh, has... They released another one with with the phone that I use, the Droid X. They've done one with the Eris. The Eris, I think you can get those bars to drop by hold it a certain way. But I was watching the Apple um, Droid X video, and yeah, boy, it sure looked like those bars uh, dropped the 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 death grip. And yet, yeah. I can't get it to happen. PC Magazine said they can't get it to happen. And Gadget said they can't get it to happen. It seems like well, okay. There's two there's two grounds to be a little perturbed by this uh, grounds one is is this really the way to respond here's pc magazine's response yeah. video they're trying to get the bars to drop is this the way to respond to the antenna issue yeah this is just silly this is like the end of lenny bruce's career where every single time he'd go on stage he'd spend half of his time talking about how the government is trying to shut him down you know it's like you've made your point i thought it was a good point when you took the stage like that every time you keep trying to come up with these new videos not only are you putting another giving the giving another spin to the controversy but you're also giving people more stuff to fight against i mean uh, i think i think i'm on record my, my track record establishes that i'm fairly pro apple that i like i tend to like their products at least i'm not in with any extra grind against Apple. And yet, the first thing I did was, okay, well, I happen to have Marshall McLuhan right here. And yeah. I wonder what he has to say yeah. about this. Yeah. And you know, I, I happen to have a <laughs> Droid X. So, okie dokie, let's see how, you know, nope, I, I can't make the signal go away. I tried away it every like way. I could not yeah, get exactly. it to go down. And it, it keeps, unfortunately, I got, I got a little bit steamed about it. My Droid X review is still like uh, on, the, on the drawing board. And I felt like I kind of had to add like two sentences saying, and in response to Apple's video saying that Droid X has, the Droid X has a signal problem. I, when I hold the Droid X normally, I cannot get the signal to drop. Unlike the, the iPhone 4, which without a case, I don't know what they're well, testing here. I think they're testing jelly donuts. I think, I, think you, I think you switched over to some sort of a fetish porn. <laughs> oh, I'm so PC, messy. PC Magazine oh. decided to test everything with the death grip, including jelly donuts. And by the way, oh, the God. jelly all over the my jelly stuff. donuts. It doesn't work. But but it's it <laughs> it is very hard uh, to understand a why Apple's doing this and b. Uh, how they got it to happen? To be honest I think, with you, I, I think someone got they, they got inside Apple's head. They just got they, to they them. They found man. somebody with a really fleshy palm, is what. They uh, well, it does it does it does it it does. I guess it shows a hypersensitivity on. And believe me, as the king of hypersensitivity, I'm not I'm not uh, you know accusing Apple of anything, but uh, hypersensitivity. And you know I know this happens, but um, really, uh, is this really the way to respond? When somebody says you've yeah. got a, def a, a faulty product, well, so do they. 
Well, the thing is, is that this, this does exactly what, what's happening here on the show. Is it gives them a, it, it's another news cycle. So they've just brought this all back up. Exactly. I don't want to talk about this yeah. anymore. Exactly. Yeah. Right. We we were ready to let it go. We were we were ready. Like we had we had said our piece. You had gotten your droid, and we were ready to like move on and talk about Apple, uh, other Apple products. And now we're talking about this again. I hear a lot uh, from people saying, "Okay, enough about cell phones." Uh, but you know what? Don't tell me enough about cell phones. <laughs> tell Apple enough about cell phones. I think it, you know, I, I think it was actually quite devious because they knew that if they released this video, you'd talk about it on air again, and then people would keep saying mean and nasty things about you, Leo. That's what it's all about. They're trying fell to get right into me. Their trap. I fell into their trap. It, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of an interesting video on YouTube. It's very well done, it's, uh, but there's no uh, narration or, at all. It's, uh, it's just a picture um, and it's almost like, you see, it speaks for itself. And it's just, it seems childish <laughs> if you, somehow. If you hold yeah. it this way and then use the Photoshop clone stamp tool to clone over part of the blank, <laughs> blank screen to the left of the bars, you can easily get it to drop to zero. Yeah. In the picture, they're gonna they're gonna get Robert Rodriguez to to <laughs> direct the next Death Grip videos. <laughs> Death Grip the, the video. You, the the only thing that I can guess, and it is just a guess because I, I have to agree with Alex that, you know, every time you bring something like this up, you, you, you make people aware of it again, you, you freshen people's awareness of it. And, and certainly if you want something to go away, that's not how you do it. Mm. Um, the only thing that I can guess is that maybe they're doing this, uh, I was going to say prophylactically or, or preemptively, uh, <laughs> just in case somebody gets it in their head to, to, to bring some sort of legal action to say, yes, this thing was defective and you, and oh, you knew yeah, it. Maybe. And, and instead they can come back and say, well, okay, here is every phone mm -hmm. in this generation, including the latest mm -hmm. from another manufacturer. And they, all, they are all subject to the same problem. Yeah. But, but that's just a guess. I, I, yeah. I agree, it, you know, without actually being in the room where the decision was made, I, I can't speculate uh, i can't say with any authority why uh why that would have been but rich remember that remember that time that you had that release of mail smith that exploded and killed those seven kids <laughs> you at some point you decided you know what i'm not going to play the the press game anymore at, at this point we fixed it you know it doesn't do that anymore much <laughs> they, were, they, they probably should they probably shouldn't soak that manual in jelly gasoline and set it on fire but hey we're not going to play judgment game at some point you have to let the news item die Listen, I have been in favor of seatbelts on school buses forever. Yes. Exactly. And I don't think that people covered that part of the story. It was ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Uh, this link from uh, somebody in our chat room, auspiciously named Fartsky. Uh, Apple to deliver cut price computers to Taiwan after error. U.S. computer giant Apple agreed on Tuesday to deliver computers to customers at massive discounts after mistakenly offering them at bargain prices. Friday, the company discounted a desktop computer and a server on the Education Apple Store's uh, Taiwan website for about 40% off. People caught on Ouch. and 41,000 units were ordered by these bargain hunters. Uh, the Mac Mini uh, was listed at um, uh, 19999 Taiwan dollars. I don't know what that is in the U.S. American currency, but that's about almost half what it would have been. The 8-gigabyte Mac Mini Snow Leopard server, uh, priced lower than the 4-gigabyte. Um, and uh, Apple, uh, you know, Dell, when this happened last year, uh, said no and is still being uh, sued by many consumers. Apple just said, all right, and may have lost as much as $40 million in the, uh, in the ensuing uh, aftermath. That's a lot of money to lose over a web error. We've seen that happen before. In fact, I... We talked to Tony Shea, who is the CEO of uh, Zappos.com. His one of his uh, high-end sites did something similar and lost millions in a, in a few hours, and they honored it. I think it's the right thing to do, as costly as it is. Well, and in some in some uh, venues, it's it's the law. Right. I mean, we've probably all seen in the Sunday newspaper circulars the fine print where it says "not responsible for typographical errors," and right. there's a reason for that. That's right. Uh, but it would not at all surprise me to learn that in places like Taiwan, if you make a mistake, you're on the hook for it. Mm. Um, and 
frankly, I'm going to really be thrilled when those uh, 12 core Mac Pros are on sale for 500 bucks because <laughs> I'm buying five, yeah. <laughs> giving them to my friends for Christmas. All right. Exactly. <laughs> Time for our picks of the week. Now, Rich, I didn't warn you. We brought you in at such last minute. I didn't give you a heads up on this one, but I'll let you uh, think about it for a little bit. Your favorite, a uh, little favorite bit of Mac hardware or software you'd like to recommend. Uh, of course, you don't have to recommend anything from Bare Bones because we know it's the greatest. Your Jimbo and, uh, and uh, BB Edit are must-haves. Text Wrangler, the free one. Just must-haves. There, is there any... Uh, you don't do MailSmith anymore? or I think you sold it. That's correct. Uh, a while back, um, we, we did the... We, the company, Bare Bones, discontinued MailSmith and actually structured the licensing so that I am continuing to work on it as uh, kind of an extracurricular oh. product and, and keeping the code alive, which is about the only way it could, it could happen. There, there was code in there that couldn't be... Oh, but yeah, there, yeah. There, there, there's still a lot of proprietary tech in there. So uh, we didn't want the product to just go away and, and leave its users dangling. So nice this is what worked out. Um, but yeah, no, I, not, not for a pick of the week. I wouldn't recommend any of my own, uh, any of my own stuff. Well, think about something and you can pick it in just a little bit. But right now I'm going to okay. start with Alex Lindsay, who is in the, in the third world capital uh, <laughs> Los Angeles, where he can barely <laughs> exactly. scrape together a cup of bandwidth. <laughs> and, and, and while you guys were talking, the, the, the phone dropped off, and I had to oh, call yeah, back. Yeah, I was yeah, like, oh my god! Oh, yeah, I, I, yeah. Wait, incredible. are you are you an AT and T customer? Alex? <laughs> yes, yes. I, I held the phone the wrong way, and I, uh, you know, so, so <laughs> at the, least you uh, test up. So, so my my recommendation. I, I just got this uh, great little stand for. Uh, it was actually sent to me. Uh, for my iPad, um, and it's called the Element Case. Have you guys seen this? The, it's called the Jewel. And here's the, here's the thing. It's a great travel stand for your uh, iPad. Now, I have to admit, I really, I actually like the Apple Case, you know, that I, that I use. But um, a lot of times I want something a little bit more, with a little bit more beef, um, uh, you know, that's really going to hold it up. And, um, and so um, uh, they, they sent me this, this, uh, this case, and what it is is it's basically a little bar, uh, it's, it's like a circular bar, and it's got three little holes in it that you can just pop the little, the, the uh, another, um, uh, basically like another piece of metal into that will let it stand at three different heights, and it turns out they're great heights. So you can, you can change it, but it's very mechanical, it's very sturdy, and it, it packs into almost nothing. So as far as putting it in my bag when I'm traveling, and, and I was concerned, if you look at it on the website, you'll see that it looks like a weapon. It's, he it's was, uh, heavy anodized metal. I mean, it's aluminum, yeah. yeah. This is this is like really high quality. And I was like, I'm not sure. So I took it. I literally took it on the plane just to make sure that no one was going to give me any problems about taking it on the plane because I was I was not sure that I, you know it was within the realm of possibility to believe that someone right. could hijack a plane with this thing. Um, and uh, don't say and, that you know, out loud, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I probably, maybe I ruined it for everyone, you right? Have, right, for yeah. that comment. But uh, no, no, it's it's just a it's just a really it's heavy duty. It feels solid, and when you open it up and you set it, if you're on a plane and you want to set it down on your, uh, you know, on your tray to watch a movie or to work, you can you can set it up in different angles. Uh, and by taking away, you know, it's just really well designed. By taking away the the kind of pushing it back and forth, it, it, it's it's super simple. It's not going to break down. It's got the rubber and the soft areas right where it, where you want it to be, um, and it and it really holds it. And it will hold it, even with the Apple case, the the iPad in the Apple case, you can still pop it in there. Oh, okay. So. So it'll it'll do it'll do both. It, it obviously doesn't sit quite as comfortably. Uh, when you take it out of the case, it fits perfectly. Um, Jewel is spelled J O U L E, like the unit of energy. Yeah, yeah. And it is from elementcase.com. Yeah, and it's so it's it's a it's a great little travel case if you're looking for something really sturdy that you want to be able to put back in your bag and have it not take up a lot of space. One hundred twenty nine bucks. I'm sorry, one hundred twenty nine for the. Uh, the regular one, the black or anodized silver, is 139. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little high, it's a little high end on the price. You know, I think that it was, it's a little pricey, um, but it's definitely, you know, it's solidly made, and I guess it's made in the, you know, uh, for those of our, who are sensitive, I believe it's all made in the U.S., so it's all cool. made locally. Yeah, very cool. Thank you, Alex. They're, they're, sh they're shiny bits of metal, and really, who can put a price on that? Absolutely, says Rich, exactly. the watch fan fanatic. Exactly. Alex, Alex, thank you for your pick. It's Andy Anatko's turn. Uh, my pick is an app that made a lot of buzz last week, 
Uh, it's a new kind of magazine for the iPads called uh, Flipboard. Oh, I love uh, it. Yep. And I became an addict. Like I, 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 went, I went through the usual like phases of of tying out new software, where it's like, oh my god, this is the most incredible thing in the world. It's like, okay, calm down, start evaluating it objectively. Oh, it doesn't do this. Oh, it doesn't do. Th oh, why doesn't it do that? And then, oh wait, it does do that. I just said, oh, okay, there is a way. Okay, got it. I got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, it's a wonderful app because what what it is is. Uh, you know that the iPad is going to be a great app, a great system for reading news and reading blogs and reading online magazines. And for now, it seems as though the industry, various folks have come up with only two very, very simple solutions, which is uh, that will either package together like a special digital version of Time magazine, or as usual, you can just subscribe to RSS feeds in uh, Net Newswire or something like that. What, uh, what? this app does is it ties into your Twitter feed and your Facebook feed. Uh, and what it will then do is now this is just a f Twitter group that I've just set up here. What it does is it realizes that what your Twitter feed and your Facebook feed do is it's all your friends who give you links to things that they think that you might be interested in. So what the app does is it simply looks through your tw your, your, tw your Twitter subscriptions and your Facebook subscriptions, and it looks for articles and pictures that have been linked to uh, via people's, uh, your friends' tweets. And it, it does something really incredible. It just puts it together into this very, very beautiful presentation just like this. Uh, and it will build out... Uh, Ever, all this content by sometimes it will uh, go through a combination of uh, checking out the RSS feed that's the it'll go it'll visit the page that's actually being linked to and it will use that to pull out a couple paragraphs to build a, a very preview and if you if the article if the article is actually something you're interested in and you can even like look at the comments that people have been leaving about it uh, on, on Twitter in that conversation stream. Once you actually want to read it, though, you click on this read on the web, and then it will open the actual web page. So you have the you have an opportunity to look at the original web page, the full article with all the ads and all the other content that the website creator uh, put together. Uh, and it really is wonderful because not only is it for your own feeds, but and this is something I didn't understand at the very beginning. Uh, the top page is all kinds of different channels you can set up. And anything that can be described on Twitter can be a channel. So if you want to do, and I, if you want to have an iPad edition of The Onion, all you have to do is set up a brand new section that simply says, that, that, that is simply linked to The Onion's Twitter feed. And every single link that the, to that the Onion posts, which is all of their articles, will be assembled into a very, very pretty magazine. Uh, when you find, you can, it'll also work with, uh, this thing is something I call the Mojo Wire, where I just put together a Twitter list of just all these different publications uh, that do all kinds of really interesting and really, really cool uh, things to link to. Uh, so it's a kind of an aggregation of all of my favorite kinds of content, not just one source, but about two dozen different sources. And so you can do that to develop your own sections of content. Uh, and it really has turned into the way, the sort of the default way uh, that I pick up and I sort of casually read uh, news and read blog posts. I still have my RSS reader for your really immersive, I want to take a look at every single thing that's been posted on all of my most important blogs and all my most important news sources. Uh, but when it comes down to I'm just, I'm having my breakfast, I want to read for about a good half hour to an hour, uh, I've, it's definitely Flipbook has, has become the fulcrum of that experience for me. I mean, I, I was, I'm, writing, I'm writing my review for the Sun-Times and uh, as I was doing it yesterday, there'd be like, I wish I could put like a sort of a stopwatch on like the progress bar of this review because there'll be a paragraph where I'm, I'm writing about linking to uh, uh, specific Twitter groups. So I want to say, oh, and if, so if you just look, if you just uh, type in the, 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 uh, the Twitter account for The Onion, and I don't know, oh, is it The Onion or is it Onion.com? So I'll open up Flipbook, but then it's recently been updated and now there are like 40 new articles that I want to read. And so I'm gone for you about never an get hour around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it is, it really is uncanny at finding the articles. It, it's it's a, such a simple idea, but the fact that it's mostly based on articles that friends and people that you know and trust are recommending, uh, it is uncanny at putting together a very, very pretty magazine of content you're actually interested in. And because it does such a good job of, of assembling these content summaries, again, sometimes from the original sources, it is very, very easy to, it's much easier to look at these 12 or 13 pages in this magazine and decide what you're interested in than it is to look at an RSS feed and say, well, here's a headline, here's a headline, here's a headline. I have no idea what is linked to from this, but I don't know, maybe I'll take a guess and I'll tap on it anyway. Yeah. So.
It's beautiful. There is some question about uh, the issue of, you know, scraping, because that's essentially what it's doing. And in some cases, it's scraping more than the RSS feed would give you. And so yeah, it, it's exactly. taking ads out. And so I wonder what's going to happen in the long run. Dave Weiner, uh, who created RSS, suggested that instead of, instead of, you know, suing or litigating over this, people should just uh create a way of of signaling here's how i want flipbook to display my content um, yeah the example that's, that's given is the big photo the boston globe big photo where they actually um in you know are, are are giving you the full full quality photo uh without a visit to the big photo site well i i, I talked i talked to the flipbook people about it and uh for one thing they they do honor robots.txt so if you don't oh, want good. flipbook to get access to your content just add that line to robots.txt it's a very simple mechanism uh also there's the the, the other uh, and also it ca it every time that you transact uh, from the application it's actually transacting through flipbook.com servers so if a thousand people if, if a thousand separate uh, users are you're, you're silent in here uh, andy can if you can just oh sorry un undo that or whatever it is whatever i did right okay hear me it's now? good yeah it was just a brief yeah Sorry. So you're uh, so saying it's pulling I'll, from I'll, their servers, not what, from... What, what it does is that the, fir the first time that someone asks for content that it doesn't have, it will get it directly from the source. So that's a, ca that's a case where it, it's scraping content. Uh, subsequent f uh, subsequent fetches, it's not a, it will get it from a cached copy uh, that is already on a flipbook server. So it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one correlation between uh, serving content uh, serving content from the the source and serving content to uh, to flipbook. Well, flipboard. but that could even be worse because if you're if I'm if I'm counting impressions and and you're not and you're stealing impressions from me by caching my content, that's that could well, even be bigger. But problem. you're not gonna uh, the really the 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 big picture situation was the only situation you can really come up with where. It it is actually taking the end content from the original site. Every other circumstance, it's only t taking enough content to create that content preview, the first couple of paragraphs. So if you really want to read the article, then you're still going to have to tap the read on the web, and that will take you, again, directly to the actual web page, not to a uh, right. reconform conform version of it, but the actual web page. Right. With, with ads and, and everything else. They're not exactly. caching the actual web page. That's that's not. They're not caching the actual web page. Again, all the all they're caching is the content the the content preview that they're assembling, and they also they're also telling they were also telling me that it's not just to be jerks about it. Uh, there are often times when they really can't. If if someone is linking like a New Yorker article from four years ago, it's still up on the server, but it's not inside the New Yorker RSS feed. So right. it has to visit the original content in order to build that content summary. Uh, in my opinion, as a guy who you know has a blog and wants people to read it, is that uh, an app like Flipboard helps people to find my content and read my content. And the fact that it helps them to read my content on my original web page, if I ever decided that I wanted uh, to place ads on my site, uh, that's perfectly okay with me. Right. We, uh, uh, we talked a little bit about it on Twitter, and I know they're going to talk about it this week on This Week in Law. It's an, it's a, there's a little bit of controversy associated with it, but it is, as, it is, as an yeah. end user, it is gorgeous, and, and, and absolutely, I have it on my iPad, and I finally got allowed to sign into my Twitter account uh, today. Yeah, that, 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 that's a problem, because it, it is a free application, but since it does interact with uh, Flipboard.com servers, uh, it got so much press, like in the first couple of days, that everybody tried to sign up their Twitter accounts and their Facebook accounts with it. Uh, they tell me that... Establishing a new account on, excuse me, uh, uh, setting it up, configuring it for your personal Twitter and your personal Facebook, that is a very, very expensive transaction for its servers. And so for that reason, that's why they're having a little bit of a meltdown. That's why they went to the invite in uh, uh, sort, of, uh, sort of prospect. They're telling me that once people are signed up and once they sort of get that super flush effect uh, all disposed with, uh, then they'll be able to serve pages and serve content previews like this uh, without having uh, a fail well situation on their hands. Very interesting. It's great. I mean, it's exactly the sort of iPad. I really think that this is an app that will help sell iPads because it, it really has become almost my default. If someone has not seen an iPad before and they want to know why it's so great, I'm now Absolutely. showing the flipboard because this is yeah. exactly the sort of thing that could not have existed before the iPad. Uh, and I really think it should be a new direction in how news magazines are assembled and disseminated. Flipbook free on the iPad. All right, we've given you enough time, Rich, to think. <laughs> Well, <clears throat> my pick of the week is these. <laughs> what are those? Plastic, that's that's what Bruno's bees. been eating this whole time. 
plastic beads on quarter inch cotton rope capable of keeping African gray parrots <laughs> entertained for as much as three minutes at a time. Um, he loves that. So, there, there are actually a, a couple of little things that, that I would pick on uh, this week. Um, they're not necessarily new, and I don't know what your criteria are. Do they have to be no, new? No, absolutely week? not. In fact, we're just interested in what you use or like or. You know, okay, like well, others well, to well good enough then. Here's here's a couple of little things. The first is that lacrosse uh, battery charger that I mentioned. Yes. Um, I I live with it. I love it. It's it's made itself indispensable. And by no means is this to say anything bad about the Apple charger, which I'm sure is a fine product. It simply reminded me of of how happy I am with the lacrosse. Um, it's the uh, BC 9009, and you can find it on places like Amazon. Well, oh, you have the 9009. See, I only have the BC 700. Mm, yeah. That makes me so elite. You, <laughs> you're very elite. <laughs> you know, it was a, the Giz, it was a pick on our uh, Gizwiz uh, show uh, a few months ago because they had uh -huh. a deal where you'd get the charger and a bunch of other things. I mean, it was like a big package of stuff all at, all of, all at once. So, yeah. Yeah, this is, I use it and I love it. I, I, I concur. Um, and the other thing, which is a little more recent for me, is the Seagate uh, Momentus XT. It's a uh, two and a half inch laptop sized hard drive. But what's uh, interesting about it is that uh, it's got 500 gig or up to 500 gig of rotating storage paired with four gig of flash. Ah. So it's a hybrid hard drive. It's it's rotating storage and they use they use the. Uh, the flash to speed up access to stuff that's that's hot, um, and because it's static, of course the the cache doesn't go away when you power the drive down. Um, and I upgraded my old MacBook Pro with this uh, drive a couple of weeks ago, and it's just been, you know, apart from the space I the space expansion, it's been noticeably quicker. And uh, I'm just, it's also surprisingly reasonably priced. It's about twice the cost of the same drive without the flash so it's a little bit expensive per gigabyte um but compared to how much 512 gig ssds cost you know that's a it's really good idea so they give you a little bit of the best of both worlds a little bit it's it's really kind of right in the middle there um and it's solidly on the price performance curve uh on the on the affordable end of the the price performance curve very cool so, Seagate uh, Momentus XT. It's momentous. And you know what? You're not going to do it, but I'm going to give you the plug. Barebones.com. <laughs> Yojimbo 2 is a fantastic, um, what, do you, what do you call it? Storage chest, I guess, for all the, all the little bits and pieces on your, on your system. It's kind of a scrapbook, notebook, uh, kind of a program, but it's just fantastic. Both of these you can try for free, uh, right? You have uh, free trials on both BD Edit. We do 30-day demos, and actually we just did a, a BB Edit update this morning, so if you've got BB Edit 9, you can run out and grab that update. Everybody loves BB Edit. I think as the, Apple still does their website in BB Edit. When the Apple Store goes down, you know they're firing up the BB Edit. I, I was going to say, when the Apple Store goes down, it's my fault. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's still hand-code their site, at least as far as I know, unless they've changed I, that recently. I, I think it's a blend of things. I, I think there's a combination of hand-coding and, and dynamically generated content. and I'm sure they, they're using the, the, the web stuff that they do, but... Uh... Yeah, but I but I know they love BB Edit over there at the, in Cupertino, as we all do. My pick is a program that went on sale at midnight today, and if you're not in South Korea, you may not have it yet. Everybody in South Korea already has it. It is, I am told, the national sport of South Korea. I'm talking about StarCraft II, and it's really nice. One of the things I like about Blizzard is for many of their games now, they uh, when they do releases for uh, uh, big games, like World of Warcraft, they they release it for simultaneously for Mac and PC, and we really appreciate that, and they deserve some credit for doing that. I've been playing the, since the um, the uh, beta came out of StarCraft II. Actually, I only played for like a couple of days, and then I got my ass kicked so badly <laughs> by these Koreans and 12-year-olds who, who have just an amazing click-per-minute speed. But if you guys, if you old guys want to play with me, I'll play with you. <laughs> I love StarCraft. Do you know when StarCraft came out? It was 1998. <laughs> this is a 12-year-old game finally getting its sequel. And uh, it is awesome. If you're a StarCraft fan, Nuclear Launch has been detected. Went on sale today simultaneously on Mac and Windows. Thank you, Blizzard, for doing that. And uh, 
It is. You can you can get the digital download, so you don't have to go to the store and, and wait in line. Got to have single handedly a... destroying the productivity of Western civilization <laughs> yeah, since 2003. <laughs> Blizzard's amazing. They really are. You know, I, 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 I have to admit, I, I went through my iPhone and deleted all the games. I was just like, oh. <laughs> yeah, so it'll I kill got, you. I got a cold, cold, cold turkey. Cold turkey. I got a new iPhone game that I really like. It's called Helsing's Revenge. Or Hels You're doing these potions and the vampires. It's like a puzzle game. Van Helsing's Revenge, something like that. I really enjoy it. But I won't tell you about that, Alex, because... No, just I want to know. Suck you la, in. La, 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 la. Alex hates fun. <laughs> he hates fun, that Alex. Rich Siegel, so glad you could come in such a short notice. And Bruno, we thank you both for being here. Well, thank you for having me and my free, my feathered friend here. Rich is probably the best known programmer in the world of Macintosh. He's been doing it for how many years? Oh, God. Uh, 20. Wow. Wait a minute. When did I start? Ever since you had. Ever since. Uh, more masters. Ever since more masters, more masters, more masters, more masters, more masters. <laughs> okay, so how sad is it that I was able to read and understand the Mac Payne code? <laughs> that's when I read. That's exactly what it's I was like, going to. I read that. We used to write code that way. Exactly. More I masters, more masters. <laughs> I know. And the event loop and the main is at the bottom of the page. <laughs> it was so funny. So did, did you enjoy reading that Mac Mac Paint? Uh, that was a that was a blast from the past. It was great to read and and. It sort of drives home the point that that sort of elegant engineering really is timeless. Yeah, um, no kidding, and, no kidding. And it, it's inspirational to see the work of really smart people and, and how and how good and, and relevant it still is. Did you go through it line by line and just kind of skim around? or? I, I kind of read my way through it. I, I didn't crawl through it line by line, but I did, uh, I, I did take a fairly fairly leisurely stroll through it through it's just it. it was just a blast from the past and to look at the assembly code jumping into traps and things it's nice, just, nice to walk around the old neighborhood it really was it's like <laughs> oh i remember having to type more masters five times because <laughs> you didn't want to put it in a loop man that generated more code exactly <laughs> pretty amazing Pretty amazing. Well, thank you, Rich, for joining us. It's really great Thanks. to see you. Barebones.com. Andy, you're not... Pleasure to see you, as always. Oh, it's great to have you on. Are you going on any cruises in the near future we can uh, look for you on? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I got off Mac Mania 10 this spring, but haven't really thought more about it. Oh, you were it. on Mac Mania 10. Oh, that's good. Oh, that's good. I'm going uh, on 11 in uh, February. <laughs> I just found out that it's going to cost me three grand just for the Antarctica excursion. Nice, <laughs> but yeah, you can't. But you know what? That's that's once in a lifetime. You can't not go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's costing me the same as a Mac Pro, but you can't not go. <laughs> oh well. Andy Anako is uh, the man in uh, in the blue suit at the uh, <laughs> at the fabulous Chicago Sun Times. You can also catch his website www.cwob.com, and uh, he joins us every week to talk about Mac stuff from his beautiful home. Exactly. My, this is my crib. So I've got one. I've got one tiki lantern and one railing, and the rest is mostly just junk cars and old TV sets. <laughs> but I managed to get. I managed to get this part yeah. of it nice and tidy up just for just for my studio. It's the magic of television. I, I like what you've done with the green screen, Andy. Yeah, really, really very <laughs> exactly. effective. He actually doesn't. He lives somewhere where there are no windows. We I also we'll have Hawaiian Beach. And Star Trek, Star Trek Starfield. <laughs> Stardate four one two point three. The Cardassians are making trouble on the neutral zone again. Make it so number two. Uh, Alex Lindsay uh, from somewhere uh, just south of uh, Botswana or something. I don't know. You were actually in Los Angeles. <laughs> yes, I'm in Los Angeles, a place that evidently is uh, bandwidth inhibited, uh, and uh, so hopefully someday they will be able to enter the 21st century. But uh, until then, I can still use the phone most right. of the time. Yes. If Thank I hold you. it right. Were you, so you were on an iPhone for this? Yeah. Yeah. Brave of you. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> all I have. It's all I have. It's all Leo, I have. Be nice. All right. I, I, I had to get the entire show. I had to get one, nice. one dig in. That's all. Just one. <laughs> Oh, I own two iPhone fours. I am. I'm not. I'm not bringing them back. Yeah, just so you can make them fight. Yeah. <laughs> well, and by the way, we'll be uh, we will be streaming live uh, on and off tomorrow. So uh, if people want to, the best way to really do it is either go to pixelcore.com uh, tomorrow, or I will Twitter 
uh, or I will tweet out uh, when we're about to go live on, uh, you know, throughout the day. So uh, definitely, if you're not following me, you can follow me if you want to get those kind of updates. And uh, we'll go from there. So pixelcore.com, not .tv, and you'll have some right. announcement on the front page. Oh, there it is. There's a live stream button right there. Okay. Yeah. So, so you can go there and see what's going on. Uh, and, we'll, and we've got the live view box, and so we're going to wander around. We're going to see there's a big party tomorrow night. We're going to try to get in without causing too much trouble okay. and, uh, and see if we can uh, show some people what the, the parties and see if we can interview some cool people and so on and so forth. Follow them on uh, Twitter, PixelCore on Twitter. They'll tweet when they're going live. And Hey, speaking of live, we're going to do a live thing from Detroit. We're going to be in the Motor City on uh, Friday and Saturday. Uh, I'm very excited about this. Uh, Friday, we're going to be um, at the, uh, that's uh, July 30th, we're going to be at the Rouge plant. We're going to get to see the uh, assembly line floor. And then we're going to head out to their uh, virtual reality design area. We're going to take a look at some of the amazing things that they use to design cars in the 21st century. It's just unbelievable, the tech that they have. So we'll stream that live. We're going to start early now because uh, we want to do it before This Week in Law. So we'll probably be 8 to 11 a.m. Pacific time. That's 11 to 2 Eastern time at live.twit.tv, Friday, July 30th. There's a meetup. That evening, 7 to 10 p.m. at the Archimedes Lounge at the Hyatt Dearborn. We already have 250 RSVPs, and the place only holds 200. So uh, what we'd like to do is if your last name begins with the letter A through G, if you could come in the first... No, I'm just... Be prepared. It might be a little crap, a little cozy. It's a, it's, a, it, it, it's a simple solution. Just we'll just get a whole bunch of those lab coats, and if some of you could stand on each other's shoulders, put on the lab coat, <laughs> and we'll just have like an international federation of tall people convention. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a, a simple idea. solution. That's we'll hand them out. We the just door. gotta work together. But <laughs> just want to swap off so that people's no, no one's knees get uh, get buckled. But uh, we can work this out. And then Saturday morning, eight to eleven a.m., July thirty first, we'll be at the Maker Fair in Detroit at the Henry Ford Museum and streaming live uh, from there as well. It's just kind of a, a field trip road trip uh, but we'll be back next tuesday live from the studio for uh, mac break weekly we do it every tuesday 11 a.m pacific 2 p.m eastern time 1800 utc at live.twit.tv or subscribe and download the show at your convenience and leisure there's audio and video versions available at twit t-w-i-t twit.tv slash mbw i'm leo laporte thanks for joining us now get back to work break time's over okay. that's much I better man I have adjustments. Brianna, oh, knock it off. Knock it off. Not those. Is, oh, he says you've got something on your this face. Is gonna, oh, yeah, this is gonna, it, it, it is. Bring your pet to work day. It is. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? What you You keep the tag on his ear for uh, identification if you should get lost. Is that the... Well, you know, because I don't believe in one of those electric fences. I give him the free right. reign right of the neighborhood. And, right. you know, it's just... Yeah. He's been chipped. Oh, he has so been chipped. Okay.